Hey guys, wanted to do another video follow up to a topic I talked about a while back, which is volume. And uh, I suggest you go back and, and, and check out that video um, so you can have better context for this one. But essentially, um, volume in the context of weightlifting is your repetitions times your sets times the weight you use. Okay? So I want you to understand that moving forward when we, when we talk about it. Now, there's a lot of back and forth out there, but if you look amongst the, the, the consensus of the experts out there, some will disagree, but the consensus of the experts in academia is that the, the thing that is most associated with growth, muscle growth, and strength is volume of work done, okay? Now, I'm going to get to some, some more things about that, but um, I have my own theories on why this is. Again, this is an association, okay? So it's hard to jump to say that volume is causing that, okay? Um, so what, what I would say, if we're, if we're going to make that association, I, I believe that... Or not, I believe I my hypothesis is that um, volume is so strongly associated with um, growth and strength more so than any other variable because volume encompasses everything. Um, people talk about intensity. They talk about you know weight used, um, time under tension, uh, tension, uh, stretch, you know, um, autocrine response, muscle damage. Um, uh, metabolic byproduct accumulation. Well, volume encompasses all of those things because you're talking about the total amount of work you have done across all different rep ranges. So volume encompasses all of those variables and I think that's why it is a, a better predictor of growth and strength than all the other variables. Now that said, the, 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 the pushback on that I will often get from people is, Lane, are you telling me I could get really, really strong by doing 60,000 pounds of volume a week on squats, just lifting the bar, but doing it for a ton of reps? Absolutely not. That will not happen. That is what I would like to call junk volume, essentially, okay? So there has to be a quality volume. I think, personally, that there is probably a, a threshold that you need to hit in terms of intensity as well. And the caveat of either intensity or fatigue, if the exercise is not sufficiently intense or sufficiently fatiguing, you will not activate enough muscle fibers, okay? So you can't just train high volume, uh, but with, with, with little effort, uh, essentially. Now, where that is is undefined, but I, you know, if you're above, you know, 70, 80 percent of your one rep max, then it's you're probably hitting those areas. Um, and again, uh, a lot of us have done programming where we'll hit something for a 10 reps and say, "Wow!" and we'll go plug it into a one rep max calculator, and the one rep max it spits out is just astronomical compared to what we know we can really do. Uh, I remember one time I repped. Uh, what did I rep? I think like 635 on deadlifts for eight or nine reps and it put me at almost like an 800 pound deadlift and I was like well being that my best ever is barely above seven I don't think that's the case um, but you know it, it's reps do not always translate to that but you are stronger in that rep range okay uh, obviously, if you're a power lifter, as you progress towards a competition, you are trying to intensify so that you become better at that particular specific skill, which is a one rep max, and a one rep max is absolutely a skill. So, um, but a lot of people who don't understand volume, they will believe, it's easy to believe that there's magic programs, because if you don't understand volume, then then you wouldn't, it's like, it's like you can believe there's magic foods if you don't track macros because, um, so an example of this would be like a uh, small off. A lot of people will do a small off squat cycle, a uh, three week base mesa cycle, and they'll put 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds on their squat. I've seen it. Um, and they'll go, wow. And they'll think that there's something magical about small off. Well, no, small off 
is you, what happened was you, you, you were used to squatting two times a week, you went to four and you tripled your volume. <laughs> so of course you got stronger, okay? But it probably wasn't a great idea to jump your volume up that fast. Um, Mike Isriatel calls it max recoverable volume uh, versus kind of Eric Helms and I, we like to talk about minimum effect effective dose uh, of volume. Um, regardless of what you target for, um, you want to progress in a reasonable way. Um, now, there are volume is very misunderstood as well. There are a uh, myriad of people online who do not understand this, and a uh, few people in particular on the YouTubes who just do not understand things and really, really should have no platform to speak and should not speak because all they do is just completely mislead people and say things like, you don't need to, in you don't need to increase volume, you just do progressive overload. That's the key to building more muscle mass. Uh, um, volume is a component of progressive overload, you fuckwad. Sorry, uh, <laughs> it just, this stuff really offends me. Um, so the progressive overload, people just think about is strength, unfortunately. It's, it's not. Progressive overload is not just strength, okay? You can only get stronger to a certain point, okay? If progressive overload only meant getting stronger and that was the only way to build more muscle, then people would cap out their muscle very early, okay? Or they just, they, they, you, you can't get stronger forever. That's the point. How are you to progress when you cannot get stronger forever? Uh, people that we continue to see make progress who aren't getting any stronger, wh what do they do? Like wish on the progressive overload fairy? So volume is another form of overload okay so you can't always because even if you can get stronger by the time you reach like uh, a certain point it's an infinitesimal progression okay so you can still add more volume and that thus is another form of overload okay so this is I'm not saying that there's not a difference between uh, getting stronger and getting more muscle, there is. The two aren't always associated, sometimes they are. But um, saying things like you just should focus on progressive overload, not volume, that is a completely misleaded statement that demonstrates that you actually don't understand what the terms mean. Um, so, well, I could go off on a whole rant about people who should not be giving advice who give advice, but that's been going on since the beginning of time and uh, it's not going to change anytime soon. Um, the other thing that gets brought up is the injury risk with, with, with training with high volumes. Um, and yes, every, every time you get under the bar there is a risk for injury. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and when you train higher volume is there a higher risk for injury? Absolutely. But keep in mind High volume for one person, what their threshold is, may be low volume for another person, okay? So for me, for me to advance, when I hit a 650 squat at Raw Nationals, I was, used, I was squatting about 50,000 pounds of volume a week. Ryan Doris hit a 644 pound squat at, at the Arnold last year, and I believe he was squatting significantly less volume than that, okay? Now, it was high volume for him based on what his tr previous training experience was, but that would have been low volume for me. I required more, my threshold was higher to progress, okay? So, you also have to make a choice. If your goal is to not be the best bodybuilder in the world or be the best powerlifter or even go to a high level, if you just like training because the way it makes you feel, you want to get stronger, you want to look better, but you don't want to get injured, well then by all means, don't train near that volume threshold where you're teetering on the edge of overreaching and injury, okay? Don't do that. Uh, but. If you want to be that, if you want to be great, if you want to take it to the highest level you can possibly take it, this is the kind of shit that's required, okay? Um, and don't sit there and tell me that you, somebody lifts wrong because they got injured. There are very few 
very few high level lifters who do not get injured. I can't name one who hasn't dealt with significant injuries over the course of 10 years, okay? Um, saying shit like that is an insult and ridiculous. And look at just look at sports like golf, okay? Completely low impact. Tiger Woods can't get healthy. His back is messed up from his golf swing. From swinging a frigging golf club, okay? Because he did so much of it. Because he wanted to be the best in the world. And damn it, he was the best in the world. Maybe the greatest of all time, okay? I promise you, if you ask him, if you look back, if he said, well, don't you, don't you regret the way you train? Because look at you. you, you're hurt now. You've had these back surgeries. He was the best in the fucking world. The best. That was his goal. If his goal was to be a, a scratch golfer and have some fun on the course and, you know, be able to hang out with his buddies on Saturdays, drink some beers and play golf, then yeah, he wouldn't have done it the way he did it. But his goal was to be the best. Okay? If you want to be the best, and it doesn't... A lot of people say they want to be the best, but they don't want to do what's required to be the best. Okay? If your goal is to be the best, you are going to have to train at an absurd level. And even if you have good genetics, you have to train at an absurd level. I trained at an absurd level, and I got hurt. And yes, it's a risk. But it's a risk I went in fully willing to take, and I do not regret it for a second. Okay? I would not trade anything I've done. I would not go back and change anything other than maybe incorporating more mobility work, that sort of thing. But I wouldn't change a damn thing about the way I train because it got me to where I was, which was a two-time national champion, silver medalist at Worlds, and set a world squat record at the time. So uh, I realize that's a little bit of a side rant, but I, I hear that criticism of volume. And it's like, well, sure, if you sit on your couch, lift two days a week, three days a week for 45 minutes and with very few sets, you'll be able to have probably a largely injury-free career. Congratulations. Nobody will ever remember your name, at least in the context of weightlifting. So it's, it's again, if you don't want to be on a super high level, that sort of thing, then fine. Don't train with high volume, especially if you don't enjoy it. But if that's what you want to do, if that's your goal, if you want to take it to that high level, it's going to be required. I, they were talking about Michael Phelps, uh, swimmer, that, 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 that his workouts, that the swimmers, these Olympic swimmers do these insane workouts, and that Michael Phelps basically does double of what everybody else does, okay? And everybody criticized him and said, you can't recover from that, uh, you'll burn out, you do this and that. Look, does he have great genetics? Sure. But he is an obsessive worker, okay? And that's what got him to where he is, which is possibly the greatest Olympian of all time. So I don't think he'd regret about anything about the way he trained. All right. I hope that's given you guys a little bit more context of volume and address some of the concerns people have with it. And again, you know, there's definitely upsides and there's downsides. And you have to decide personally what is important for you and what your goals are. All right, guys. I'll catch you next time.